What do you think about someone like Elizabeth Warren that's running right now for U.S. Senate in Massachusetts who is running on a campaign that says that she's the... Um, She's the inspiration of the Occupy movement. She's the person that's against the banks. She wants to regulate them. Do you, do you trust her? Do you believe in her? What do you think about her and, and her stance on the banks? I, you know, I don't. I think Elizabeth Warren is laughable at best. I think she's just playing a lot of platitudes to the to the Occupy crowd and trying to get a lot of um, like liberal Democrats and people that are leftists or you know heavily anti-war in their leanings. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, she supports war. I mean, uh, you know, she's going to try to say, like, yeah, you know, the banks are, are this and need to be, you know, got in line and put a leash on them or whatever. But at the same time, she's a warmonger. I mean, her policies are all pro-war, pro-Israel, pro-fucking anti-Iran. It's, it's ridiculous. So I think she's a joke if she's saying that she's, you know, the philosophical, um, like, embodiment of the 99% you know, philosophy. Yeah, she basically because... said she was the basis of it. She almost, it was almost like one of those statements like Al Gore when he invented the internet. You know, like, she was the person that, <laughs> that the, because of her, they, they decided to occupy. Like, that's what it almost seemed like, the statements. They were kind of yeah. ludicrous. But, um, yeah, I must have missed that memo. <laughs> yeah, Howie Cobb brings it up a lot. That's why I, I, I kind of, uh, I, it's a stuck in my head from him. But, uh, yeah, no, she's just, you know, like any good politician, she's just trying to play off and, and get as many supporters as she can oh, yeah. by saying whatever empty nonsense she can sputter. Oh, yeah. And, and she kind of ran away from the Occupy movement once it wasn't as good for her politically. So it's uh, it's very interesting. But, uh, you know, I look at someone like her and I say, where are you on Audit the Fed? Where are you on uh, John Corzine, Corzine, the former Goldman Sachs head who campaigned with Obama gave Obama a ton of money in 2008, who Joe Biden said was the person that they had to call and go to when the financial crisis hit. And basically, John Corzine told them to go bail out the banks, and they did it. And then this guy, John Corzine, steals people's farms. He has a company called MF Global. They're out of money. They're bankrupt. They've, they have no money left. So what they did, and I'm going to say that John Corzine know, knew exactly what he was doing, and he did this. They owed the money to Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan, that other company. They owed the money. They were bankrupt. What did they do? They took the money from the farmers. They took their private accounts and stole that money and gave it. So it's basically like paying your bill with somebody else's money. And, that, and then they turned around and said that it was they lost the paperwork. They don't know what happened, which is a bold-faced lie. Anybody in this industry, which I was in this industry for over 10 years, I was a licensed financial advisor, I ma managed people's money. The number one cardinal sin, the number one rule for any regulatory agency, whether it's in Massachusetts or the feds or the, or the SEC or the uh, FINRA, is you do not co-mingle money. You do not take a client's money ever. You don't, you don't put them in the same account, and they did that. And the proof is in the pudding because the guy from J.B.P. Morgan was the... Um, the regular, you know, he's basically hired as the compliance manager. Every firm has a compliance manager. He was the person that knew that this trade, there was something wrong with it, that, J, that uh, MF Global didn't have the money, and the only way that they could have covered this loss is to steal their client's money. And he had Corzine's group sign a piece of paper saying that, they, that it was not commingled money. And Corzine's ass is on the line on this, and he's still not going to jail. Eric Holder says no charges will be filed. And Elizabeth Warren says shit about it. This guy stole people's farms. Like farmers, American farmers who had farms, family farms for life. They all invested in this company. Their money is gone. There's no investigation. When John Corzine goes, behind, b b goes before the U.S. Congress, they call him the Honorable John Corzine as he lies, as he withholds, as he passes the, the buck to a lower-level employee. He still won't... Tell us where the money went. There's no investigation at his company. There's no investigation within the U.S. Criminal Justice Department uh, under the Obama administration. Elizabeth Warren is silent. She doesn't say anything about it. She's all about the banks. Here's the biggest banking scandal since Madoff. He's a Democrat, former governor of New Jersey, and you're silent on it, Elizabeth Warren. I'm calling that bullshit. That's bankrupt. Same with Obama. Same with Biden. And, you know, i, I got to even call out the Republicans. Where are you on this? Why aren't you raising holy hell about John Corzine? I don't get it.
This is this is my my can rant this week. I get so fired up. I guess Garrett, I'm so glad to have you on the show and uh, bringing this issue up. This is why we need to continue to talk about this to expose what's going on. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, that's you know the most important thing people, anybody could do is is you know we need to talk about these things. Like you know at our dinner tables in our communities with our friends, like whatever. Like we need to be involved in our government. We need to be involved in these things that affect us, even if they're boring or you know maybe talking about monetary policy makes your eyes glaze over you know but it affects us significantly and severely